Schrager is now joining us. Peter Schrager, Fox Sports NFL reporter, and a great one brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. How about that? I, let's just I'll just throw this out at you because we just found out about it a minute ago. Mm -hmm. I, Baltimore looks at that division and thinks, hey, if we're going to get past Pittsburgh, we got to get to Ben Roethlisberger. We got to get to Baker Mayfield. That just feels like Baltimore called Minnesota and said, he's good. We'll give you some draft picks. I, it doesn't feel like to me Minnesota's bailing on him. He's a good player, right? He's a great player, but Minnesota gave him a huge contract when they made the trade before the start of the season. So it is head scratching on Minnesota's end. But Daniil Hunter was announced today, likely out for the rest of the season. The Vikings, one win. Maybe it's one of those deals where Joy was kind of referring to it, where where are we going? Let's get some draft picks while we can and someone else take care of this contract. The Ravens, really interesting. They know that they've got some deficiencies on offense and on defense and in the interior offensive line. Like, they're not done tinkering. They're 5-1, and one, but they're not sitting pretty. Not only did they make this move, but the Des Bryant move, they're trying to work him out and get him to the practice squad, maybe get another red zone target for Lamar. I always respect teams that are good but want to be great. And they are no, they're no stranger to looking at this. The Chiefs have their number. The Titans beat them up in the playoffs last year, and the Steelers are back. Ravens might be the fourth best team in the AFC right now, and that's not good enough. So the Ngakwe move is a big one. It's a big swing, and I love it. Um, you know, there's losing in the NFL, and then there's what the Cowboys are doing, where you've got dysfunction, you've got leaking. Uh, is, is, is it as bad, Shrags, as it seems? Look, the injuries are the first thing that the rational fan wants to point to and say, well, look, they're down to their fourth left tackle. They've got no Zach Martin. They've got no Travis Frederick. He retired. But I would point to teams like the 49ers who have lost everyone from an injury and fight every week and win games. I would point to teams, oh, I don't know, like the Tennessee Titans who missed two weeks of practice because of COVID-19 and have come out and beaten two really good teams, the Bills and the Texans, in back-to-back -back weeks. <clears throat> the Cowboys situation is interesting for me because I think when – there were a lot of red flags this offseason, and no one really like was like, oh, wait, that is kind of weird. Uh, Mike McCarthy sat down with Jerry Jones and was hired. Like, they didn't do the full interview process. There was Marvin Lewis or a couple other guys they spoke with, but Mike McCarthy met with Jerry and was hired. There was no situation where it was like, let's meet with Lincoln Riley or let's try to get Nick Saban or, heck, let's go talk to Stefanski and Rule. Like, Mike McCarthy was out of football last year. And for Jerry Jones, the biggest team, the star, to say, all right, I'm going to take Mike McCarthy, who spent the offseason looking at analytics and make him the bell of the ball and the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, and he's going to bring along Mike Nolan, I, that might be a bit of a red flag. The other red flag, changing a defensive system in a COVID-shortened offseason where you can't teach it to the defense might have been a little bit too much too soon for a defense that was learning an entirely new scheme without being there at the practice field. And lastly, in 10 years from now, we're going to look back on the CD Lamb pick and be like, that was great. But for the emergency that they had on defense, knowing what they had, taking a luxury item like a wide receiver with the 18th overall pick when there were guys on defense that might have really been helpful right now on a defense that is struggling and is at one of the all-time worst paces we've ever seen in the league, Maybe that was a red flag we could have looked at. So it's all hindsight. And Colin, I was the first person to say, they're loaded. They've got CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup and Amari Cooper. But I don't know if we should have maybe looked at some of these things and said, wait a second, they don't have a single defensive back on their team that we know and that has any real NFL experience. Maybe that's a problem. Uh, Joy and I were saying this. For some reason, wide receivers get talked a lot about at the trading deadline because it's usually a team like a Chicago or Baltimore that's good but there's a roadblock, the Packers and Aaron Rodgers or the Steelers and Mahomes and those Ravens and Bears think we need some cheap touchdowns. We need a perimeter energy guy. And I said with the Cowboys, CeeDee Lamb's going to be great. Amari Cooper's big player. Cedric Wilson can play. Yeah. My, Michael Gallup, you're going to have to pay him soon. And I look at the Bears and the Ravens and let's just talk like Bears. And the Bears have, they, they have Allen Robinson and nothing. Do you <laughs> think the Cowboys like the Vikings, may look at this in the next week and go, maybe it's time to get some picks and reboot a little bit. What do you think the about The difference that? is that as we talk on this Thursday morning, Colin, the Cowboys are in first place. Like, it's really weird. Like, they're in first place. They have sole possession of first place in their division. So if there was to be a playoff game, they're still at home on a Saturday night with Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth talking about what Zeke Elliott's going to do. Like, that's the difference. I think the Vikings, they look at this and they're realistic and they're saying, all right, we're going to try to win, but I don't know if this is our best step and might as well get a bounty of picks for our guy 
uh, Yannick Ngakwe, who we barely know. The Cowboys, the offense hasn't really been the problem, right? Like Gallup's been good and Cooper's been good and Lance's been good. What are you getting for Michael Gallup? If it's a draft pick, that doesn't help them right now. I, I think the Cowboys are still competitive in the NFC East, which makes it difficult for them to say, yeah, pull the trigger and do a, do a fire sale right now. I'm interested on the Bears side because I, this is almost by design. Like, they're okay winning this way. And I think a lot of Bears fans are frustrated saying, what is with our offense? They've got nothing as far as, a, you know, Tariq Cohen goes down. We don't have anything to replace it. And yet they win, they win, they win. They're five and one. They've got one against the Rams this weekend. I'm really interested to see what happens because if they win every game, 23 to 20, 21 to 15, 20 to 17, they're all wins. They count. And I don't know if style points matter anymore. Antonio Brown, we see Seattle's kind of interested. There's, uh, we talked about this to start the show. Wide receivers over the last four to five years for a variety of reasons are plentiful. Uh, we had 30 drafted last year. Two of the top seven this year in yards are rookie receivers. I, I don't know how many times you want to roll the dice on a receiver that's had some locker room issues. Antonio Brown's a commodity, though. He's talented. Do you buy the Seahawk rumors? I was leaning over because this here is a Travis Fulgham jersey from Old Dominion. <laughs> I was talking about him, and the school sent me his jersey. That's who's going to be the star tonight. And then you just to your point, Travis Fulgham is one of the best wide receivers in football right now for the Eagles. And then you look at what the Seahawks already have, and they're getting stuff from David Moore, who went to a non-name brand college. Yeah. All around the league, there are all these other guys that are stepping up. Do you really want to bring in Antonio Brown when you're 5-0 and and you're that team? I would say this. Pete Carroll, John Schneider... These guys, they're not pushovers. They're also not one of these teams that is looking to just add talent for a splash. They know what they're doing. John Schneider is probably the best general manager in football right now, and his track record speaks for itself. If they are to bring in Antonio Brown, this isn't going to be some, uh, you know, Hail Mary in the wind. It's going to be one of these deals where there's zero tolerance. They're not going to put up with his stuff and that they've done their due diligence. I, I've heard that the Seahawks have been thinking about Antonio Brown for more than a year now. I mean, Let's see what happens. But I also don't think every team can take an Antonio Brown based on what has been in the news and what he does off the field and, of course, what his Twitter feed populates itself with on a day-to-day -day basis. Eagles play tonight. I, 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 I am known around these parts as Mr. Positivity. And you so, are. And I looked this morning, Shrags, and I said to myself, I told the staff, because I'm, I'm the Eagle guy on the staff, and I said, the ne if you asked an Eagle fan and you said, God, what do we need right now? You'd say, a buy a team in dysfunction, <laughs> and some bad offenses. Well, in the next month, they face the Giants twice, get a bye in the Cowboys. I think they're going to sweep it. I think they're going to win those three and get healthy. They play tonight. I look at the Philadelphia Eagles, and I'm like, listen, the schedule gives us exactly what we need, and I think they win tonight. You're, you have good sourcing there. How yeah. are they viewing the world right now as nobody is healthy? survive in advance it's the same deals with the cowboys the eagles have one win and a tie and yet they're waking up this morning feeling pretty good because here's the deal i just mentioned travis fulgham a sixth round pick out of old dominion who spent his childhood li living in cairo egypt he's their number one wide receiver right now honestly and their running back is boston scott who is five foot seven and was never supposed to be a number one wide running back their tight ends no Ertz, no goddard it's richard rogers is their number one tight end i say all that because these aren't season-ending injuries. These guys are coming back. So Ertz is coming back. Goddard's coming back. Miles Sanders is coming back. Deshaun Jackson will be on the field tonight. Alshon Jeffrey's coming back. If you just get to the bye, which is in two weeks, to your point, Colin, the Eagles, they could be really good again. Like, this could just be a blip, and we'll forget about it once they start their November and December. The Eagles get just about everyone back to the lineup. Their offensive line is in tatters. Wentz is, is doing heroic work in these losses. Just have to get a couple wins here. Maybe even just one win. Just beat the Giants. You can even lose to the Cowboys next week. Get to the bye, and then they get their entire arsenal on offense back, and you don't have to rely on Travis Fulgham and John Hightower and Richard Rodgers, which they will be tonight. I, I think they win tonight. I do. I don't think it'll be easy, but I think their whole deal is let's just get to that bye, and then let's, let's reset, and then let's start our November-December run. Fox Sports, Good Morning Football 2 and the NFL Network, uh, co-author of the New York Times bestseller, Out of the Blue, Peter Schrager. It is good. Travis I, Fulgham. Yeah. Let's go. He is here to stay, my friend. Old Dominion football, the very best. <laughs> what we talk about, ratings. <laughs> good seeing you, buddy. Uh, coming up next, be ready in life.
You may get an opportunity, and you better be ready for it because the Steelers are back, and that dry spell is over. And we'll talk about that, plus Greg Cosell, top of next hour. You want a ribeye? You don't have to buy the cow. You want to fly on an aeroplane? You don't have to buy the plane or the seat or the row. You just buy the seat. That's why, why are you paying for unlimited data on your cell phone when you're only using two gigs of data a month? This is how the big boys, the big carriers hook you. Uh, T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T, they charge you obscenely high monthly fees for data you'll never use and perks you'll never need. Go to Pure Talk USA. Don't have to change your phone. Don't have to change your number. They're on the exact same towers, and you get the exact same great coverage. Half the cost, though. Unlimited talk, unlimited text, two gigs of data. Just 20 bucks a month, that's it. Pure Talk USA, right now. Grab your phone, dial, pound, 250 and say Colin Coward. Dial pound 250 and say my name, Colin Coward. That will give you an additional 50% off the first month. Pure Talk USA.